Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. Do you do a little bit of carving? Do you use power tools and do light grinding and things like that? Small projects? Maybe you already own some Dremel tools. You looking to make an upgrade? Check this out. I recently purchased this Fordham Flex Shaft Carving Kit right here. We're going to be unboxing this today, seeing what we get inside and talking about it just a little bit. So be sure to stick around. So talking about this Fordham kit here today, um, I just kind of want to maybe give you a little explanation as why I decided to go with this. I was searching around for something to replace my Dremels with. You know, Dremel's a big brand. You can find it all over. You find all kinds of stuff they offer. But for me, these tools are burning out within like six months. I really just, I don't see the need to buy their ex extended two-year warranty from like Lowell's or Home Depot if they're burning out in six months. So that means it's going to go get fixed and come back, be burned out in six months. I'm just, I'm tired of giving them my money to have this tool burn out. Now for a while Dremel was doing great. I had the Dremel 200, like bought that thing 10 years ago. Actually my wife did. She got it for me for Christmas one year when I was just starting to make things and it worked great. It worked so great that I gave that little Dremel 200 to a buddy of mine just a couple years ago. Now, I believe he's still got that in his shop. The bearings are starting to go. You can kind of hear it, but it still starts and runs. So I gave him that because I replaced it with the Dremel 3000. Now, the Dremel 3000 um, is a variable speed. You got 2 to 10 on it, and you know it's just a good little Dremel I thought to uh, do a little bit of carving, touching up my carvings with and adding detail. Um, it worked for a little while. I got about six months out of it and then it died. Now I did find a YouTube video on how to fix this. I shot my own YouTube video on how to fix this and after using it for about 15 minutes after the repair, it died again. And so this tool continues to sit on my shelf because well, Maybe one day I'll fix it and one of the kids can use it on their projects. But it just, I feel like it's a waste of money. Very disappointing. Um, so that died. Well, I went back down, local hardware store, picked up the Dremel 4000. Thinking, okay, you know, a little bit bigger, you're going to spend more money, it's going to be an upgrade, it's going to last longer, right? It's got more of a professional look. I mean, this thing goes from 5 to... 35 on a level, you know, it's all variable speed. Um, this thing worked great. Again, though, I think I got about six to eight months and it's starting to spit and sputter. So it's running, but every now and then it's cutting out and on and out and on and it's acting just like the last one. So pretty soon the wire will break inside and it will render itself useless. Between these two, I will, uh, boy, I think I've spent maybe 160, 170 bucks. For what? To go potentially buy another one? No. Time to start searching around. The way I see it, I've already spent half the money that it cost for a professional tool. So I've already spent half the money for this professional tool. Now Fordham has a full website. They've got all kinds of attachments. They've got some bits. They've got all kinds of different motors for different applications, replacement flex shafts. You can buy a bunch of stuff for this thing. Now there are different kits and different models and things like that. Um, you can find this one though in the description below. I will leave links to Amazon. You buy through those links, you help support this channel. I'll thank you in advance. I will also leave links to the Dremels that I've had if you know you guys want to buy them then go for it you know I support that no big deal we got to buy what we can afford you know I think one of those was around 65 or so the other one's around 100 bucks this Fordham kit runs right around 350 or so something like that I've seen a couple different prices so right around 350 is you know what you can plan to spend on this if it works as well as it uh, as it says and as well as the reviews make it sound then to me that's worth the money 
Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to brag about how much I've spent on this. I'm just letting you guys know so you don't have, you know, a shock when you go pull this up. Um, you know, this kit is the K.5240 Professional Flex Chef Wood Carving Kit. MSR hang-up motor, 1 -sixth horsepower, runs in forward and reverse at speeds up to 1800 RPMs. A variable speed foot controller. It is in a plastic housing, but that means you can sit in a stool, use the toe, use your toes or the ball of your foot to press down the pedal on how fast this thing is going to go or how slow. Um, it has a collet handpiece, accepts bits that are a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, and three thirty-second diameter shafts. Quarter of an inch, that's pretty good size. That's what I'm using in my die grinders, my bigger die grinders. Um, I will point out, I did see a video of a guy using this, and he had a grinding or a sanding deal on there like that big. And I mean, if this thing can power that, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, it's a, it has a 27-piece uh, accessory kit. It includes typhoons, other types of wood carving burrs, and rotary burr holder. Um, it has a DVD, fur feathers, fins, three-disc, how to power carve DVD, and a two-year limited warranty on the motor and the controller. So it's already in the price to have that warranty. That's awesome. You buy this kit, you've got really everything you need to just start using it and giving it a go and I don't have to buy a bunch of bits right off the bat. So that's pretty sweet. Um, let's see here. Grab my knife and let's cut some tape. You guys can go right on Amazon. Check them out for yourself. Always tell everybody, read the reviews. Look it over yourself, you know. Man. Who we got? We got an instruction manual. Register my Fordham. Registry form. Solutions. These guys make all kinds of stuff. all kinds of stuff in here. Oh boy, lots of replacement parts, extras, add-ons, all kinds of other grinding implement tools in that book. First glance, what a professional setup. I mean, seriously. To me, this this speaks a lot about a company. I mean, how professional is that? You've got your normal um, you know, operator, owner's manual, registry form. Those things come with most tools. But then to look in here, 2017 Power Tool Catalog and Price List. Okay, it is 2018. This says 2017. I'm going to assume their prices haven't changed or they haven't changed a whole lot. That That's not a big deal to me, but I think it's pretty awesome that they throw a catalog, one catalog. Rotary accessories for every job. They throw another catalog in there. I'm looking in this box, right? Here it is, so you guys can see. Everything's in here as neat as it can be. Um, what is this? We've got some flex shaft lubricant. Here is the hand piece in its own little case, own little plastic case to keep it safe. It looks like you've got a wrench, all the collets in there. Cool. I'm excited. I'm really, I'm trying to contain myself here. <laughs> this is like a Christmas present. We've got some bits, um, burr bits, and different kinds of wheels here. Right there in their own little package. Nice thing about owning a couple Dremels prior to this is now I've got some nice little plastic boxes I can put all this stuff in. So, thanks. All right, we got Frank Russell's power carving. Fur, feathers, and fins. How to carve with Fordham, power tools, and accessories. Three DVD set. I'll probably watch that. Let's see here. Just got some cardboard, kind of keeping everything safe. Um, here's a nice little stand. Oh, a little Lazy Susan stand. Bunch of spots for all your bits and different size holes, so they'll all fit in there. All right, so looking in the box, you've got the motor and the flex shaft and everything. Boy, this thing is a motor. We got some weight. There it all is. Here is our flex shaft right here. You know, what do we got? Maybe maybe three feet long off the motor. Um, it looks like we've got our plug. Plug it in. 
Again, haven't read any instructions, haven't really looked anything over. What it's looking like is the plug on the motor, plug into your foot pedal, plug your foot pedal into the wall. So the foot pedal is the in-between to give you your power up and down. Um, I, I will say I didn't pay attention to the fact that the foot pedal's plastic. Opening up that catalog just now and I saw a quick metal, metal replacement ones. So down the road that'll probably be something I look into. Um, at least when this breaks. I'm not going to jump on the money to do that right away. We'll see what happens. Let's see here. So when you look down in where the shaft goes, it's a key shaft. So you've got this shaft with a little key that sticks off to the side that it doesn't want me to twist here to show you. A little piece that sticks off right here. And you look down in the handle, line that baby up. And it just pops in place. Done. Um, the handle here seems to have put this in the handle to hold the shaft steady like that. Use the wrench here to undo the collet. Well, the nut that keeps the collet in place so that you can pull it out and replace it. Um, it does come with a, a bit that's got a quarter inch shaft. It's got the quarter inch collet in there right now, so I'm gonna leave that in and we'll pop that bit in here in just a couple couple minutes and we'll try that All out. All right, you guys. So this unboxing video felt really, really exciting for me as I was doing it. And I go back through and start editing it and I'm like, wow, this is boring as all get up. Like, if you're not bored, then you're awesome. Thank you for making it this far. I'm bored out of my mind watching my own video, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to just show you guys some of the work I've already done. So now at this point, I've already had the Fordham carving system here for, I don't know, a few months, and I've been able to start carving up some little fish. I'll bring the camera in in just a minute so you guys can see this a little better. Now, this is out of uh, some maple burl that I had, and what I did was I drew the rough shape of the fish out. I roughed them out of my bandsaw, and then I came through with some of the awesome carving bits that I had. Some are made by Typhoon, which you can get through Fordham, and some are made by Sabertooth Tools, which I order off Sabertooth directly or Amazon. Um, Yet yeah, they don't pay for this or anything. They're just tools that I like to use, and you guys can find links for all that stuff below in the description. But I really just wanted to show you guys some of the work that this thing is capable of uh, creating and completing. So I'm really excited about these little fish. These are some of the first fish that I've, I've ever carved. I've never really carved any other fish. So this was a lot of fun. Let me bring the camera in a little closer and you guys can take a look. All right, hey guys. So like I said, bring in a little bit closer here so you can take a look at some of these fish that I've created. These are maple burl. Just kind of going for just like some little fish. They're for a future build of mine. Um, just kind of a, a project of my own that I really want to push my limits and work toward and these fish will be incorporated in that. So just figured I'd let you guys see them here real quick. Kind of liven up this video because like I said, I'm sorry. I'm feeling really bored watching this thing. Feeling really bad that I'm going to put this out as content. So we got to, you know, step it up. A little glare. I like this guy though. He's got the light and the dark color. If you guys think these fish are pretty neat, just comment below. Let me know. Again, these are like the first fish I've ever done like this. So, you know, don't don't judge me too hard. But uh, I roughed them out on the bandsaw. I got them really close. And then what I used was like my saber tooth bit. Really aggressive stuff here. And I used this on the Fordham Carver. Like, no joke. I didn't use a die grinder. <clears throat> right here on the Fordham Carver. I, uh, uh, where is it? Well, I put the other insert in so that it would take a, you know, a quarter inch bit, quarter inch shaft, and this thing worked great. As you can see right now, I've kind of got this 3M sanding head on here. Uh, this one's got an eighth inch shaft, so you can swap out those collets for different sizes, different tools, and just here's some of the bits that I currently have that I'm using to create fish with. Um, you know, as you guys can tell, I'm not very happy with Dremel, but these, these are awesome through Dremel. These work great. Yeah, right there. That works awesome for sanding it down. It is cheaper than this attachment. 
these are quite expensive, but they work really well for all these little fine spots I'm finding out. So, um, but yeah, I think this thing is just great for this fine little detail, fine little carvings. You know, I had purchased it with the idea of using it on bigger carvings and stuff, but that's just, it's not going to be feasible. That's not going to work. And so I'll still be using die grinders on my bears and my bigger chainsaw carvings. But this is going to help me bring awesome little detail like this to my Adirondack style furniture, to that rustic furniture I'm building. If you're not sure about that rustic furniture that I'm, I'm talking about, check out the links that are coming up here in the corner. I don't know, one side or the other. And uh, you guys can see what those look like. So that's pretty much it about this Fordham Carver. Um, it is more expensive than like some of the cheap die grinders and things I use in that. Eventually I'll put a video together so you guys can see those in full detail as well. But if you want to do like some small details, small project stuff, this thing is awesome. Um, if you're just starting out, you know, maybe go ahead and start with the Dremels. You know, I mean, I'm really passionate about the fact that I'm really disgusted with them. But if you like them, you like them, you know. And if, if it's what you can afford, then it's what you can afford. And my opinion doesn't matter at that point. But make sure you pay for the warranty. Get the warranty to go with it because it's totally going to be worth it. So you can send that thing back and they can repair it or send you a new one. So don't pass up those warranties, okay? Um, yeah. That's pretty much it though on this Fordham Carver. Uh, if you feel like I missed something or you got a question on it, just feel free to ask and I'll try to give you guys, you know, answer that to the best of my ability. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up though and hit subscribe if you haven't. I got some other fun videos popping up here in these corners. Be sure to check one or all of them out. I thank you guys and I'll see you next time.